Hello and welcome to A Livelihood. I'm Karma Kita, your host, and today I have Nene Akwe Ellerman, and Nene is a resident scholar at Brandeis Women's Center, and she's also the director of a project that's very dear to her heart called Polaris Project, and we're going to hear a lot about Polaris today. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Thomas. It's yes, lovely it's to be here. It's really nice to have you. And you and I met when we were both visiting scholars at Wellesley some years ago. Yes, and quite a few years ago. Over ten years ago. Yeah, I think we had a lovely year together. So I know that years ago you were a college professor at various places, including Wellesley and that you were teaching Italian film and literature, of all things. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes because yeah. I was brought up in Italy. I, <coughs> I was an academic for 30 years and, and taught at Wellesley, Brown, BC, Brandeis, and Harvard. So let's talk about something that I know is, is critical to you and you've been putting so much into it. And I heard about this project, Polaris Project, a number of years ago because I heard about your wonderful son, Derek. Yeah. When he was a senior, about to graduate, um, writing an honors thesis in cognitive neuroscience, he called me one day and he said, Mom, I'm dropping my thesis. Catherine Chan, who is the co-founder of the Polaris Project, um, and I are writing up a business plan and we are competing in the Young Entrepreneurship Program. Mm. We, they had uh, come across, they had, been, it was, they had a discussion and then they came across an article in the Providence Journal that spoke about a police raid of a massage parlor brothel in which six young Korean women were discovered lying, mm. sleeping directly on the cement with signs mm. of cigarette burns on their arms. Mm. And they were so horrified by this and started doing research and discovered that slavery is very much alive today, mm. right here mm. in the United States. Mm. And so they, they put aside their other plans and they decided to focus on this and to make a difference. And they went. They, they won second place. Went to Washington with mm-hmm. twelve thousand five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Today, seven years later, Polaris Project is the leading anti-human trafficking NGO in the mm-hmm. U.S. and mm-hmm. Japan, with headquarters in Washington D.C. and offices in New Jersey, Colorado, mm-hmm. and Tokyo. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us what your role is, what you've well, been doing for Polaris Project. <laughs> my role has been, first of all, I have to say that in the 60s, I was very much of a social social, social activist. I participated in all the anti-war demonstrations mm-hmm. here. So this is some, nothing yes, new for you. Nothing new, but, and then also in Washington. But then came marriage, child, child bearing, <laughs> child rearing, and of course I was teaching full time throughout. So mm-hmm. my social activism sort of took a, a back, went, took the back burner uh, position. Mm-hmm. Having so-called retired from teaching and working on my book, and having heard about Polaris Project and the whole issue of modern-day slavery, I became instantly engaged. This was something mm-hmm. as a woman, as a mother, mm-hmm. as, um, as someone who firmly believes and fights for human rights. Mm-hmm. I felt that this was an issue that I could not not engage in. Mm-hmm. My That's son, my s- everything I learned, I've learned through Derek and Catherine, mm-hmm. who co-founded, and through the wonderful staff they have uh, now counting, I think it's 30, 33 or 35 people mm-hmm. on the Polaris staff having started out with two. So mm-hmm. everything I've learned, I've learned through them, mm-hmm. but then it, it, it has become, over the past seven years, an overriding passion. I, I go to sleep with it, I wake up with it, I dream with it, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. there are millions, literally the, the official numbers, at least 27 million people in this mm-hmm. world living in conditions of slavery. Yeah. And yeah. right here in the United States, and that's what so many people don't realize, mm-hmm. is that we have a huge, huge problem yeah. with modern-day slavery. Well, I was shocked about yes. myself. I thought it was in yes. uh, you know, other 
less developed countries. Yes, yes. everybody thinks of Cambodia, mm -hmm. Nepal, mm -hmm. India, Thailand, mm -hmm. etc. Or they think that the victims of modern day slavery and human trafficking are foreign nationals who are brought mm -hmm. into this country. Mm -hmm. At this but moment. Sometimes there's children, American children, well, that get the, the, what, what, is, what, is, yeah. what I think is so telling and shocking is that the official figure is that approximately 17,500 foreign nationals are brought into the country every mm -hmm. year, 50% mm -hmm. of which or more are 80% probably are women and children, mm -hmm. and of those 50% children. Mm -hmm. But when you think of what is going on right here at home, just considering the minors, mm -hmm. U.S. citizens under the age of 18, there are 300,000 kids, mostly girls, mm -hmm. who are in forced commercial sexual exploitation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe this is a good time for us to show that little clip. Yes. yes um, now yeah. this is a clip from a film that's being developed by a well-known documentarian named Bob Bilheimer. Yes. Right? I yes. got his name right. He did. This yes. He, 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 his former film was A Closer Walk on the Pandemic of AIDS and now he's working okay. on the pandemic of human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's roll that the, the piece about the European teenager that, um, that's so interesting. My family, it was uh, drinking, you know, and uh, the people who don't like to work or something. I have uh, four brothers. She was basically dropped by her parents in an orphanage. She was disposed of. I was alone and uh, missing the love, the affection. The okay. She ended up as a victim of traffic because of the corruption within the system. So are there ways that people could get involved in Polaris Project? Well, certainly. I mean, I think the first thing is just whatever you've learned from today, um, spread the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Go to the website, www.polarisproject.org. Mm -hmm. Go to the Take Action, the Action cen Center, and there are all sorts of suggestions of how you, be you can become involved. Mm -hmm. Obviously, donations are huge. Um, the more donations we receive, the, 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 the greater the publicity we can put out on the National Human Trafficking Hotline. Mm -hmm. And that is what is going not only to, to allow victims become aware of it. There are certain cities that actually have billboards up now, mm -hmm. both with the National Human Trafficking Hotline and mm -hmm. with the Johns. And this is, this is something else that I'd like to quickly address, and that is that, um, as I said, we have to hold, hold the, the traffickers accountable, everybody along the chain, but also the Johns. Mm -hmm. And we are very much moving towards the Swedish model, which criminalizes the Johns, they, mm. they have to pay a hefty fine and they now spend up to six months in prison mm. and soon maybe it will be one year mm. and decriminalize the women because the prostituted women, 90% of them would prefer to be in any other profession than mm. the one in which mm. they are enslaved mm. or have been for. 